Post game cards report now on Halo Waypoint. We have a new update when it comes to some celebrities coming to the Halo event at the end of this month. We have an update on the winter update and how we'll the progress and that's going. And it looks like maybe the flood returning for season four. Well, if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So we do know that there is an HCS event happening at the end of this month, which I will be at. Guys, if you see me there, make sure you stop by and say, hey, we got a pick or something like that. We have some celebrities showing up for this event as well as in Master Chief himself, Steve Downs, and the voice of Cortana, the weapon, Jen Taylor coming in as well, which I'm super excited about this. I've never had a chance to meet these people in person. They'll be taking part of like some meet and greets, some panels and some signings and stuff like that. So, you know, oh yeah, I'm definitely have to jump on that for sure. But this Halo event is far more than just HCS and a couple of celebrities. There's like a Halo festival happening. Like remember what the Halo Fest was back in 2001? It seems like they're trying to replicate that with this HCS World event right here. We have 343 dev panels. We have cosplay tournament setup kind of stuff like that. A special guest signings we just, we just mentioned with Steve Downs and Jen Taylor. Games, giveaways, you can play at the event as well. All happening on October 21st and on the 22nd. This entire event is taking place from October 20th through the 23rd. So guys, it's going to be an absolutely epic weekend. I'm going to jump in and have my fun with this because I cannot wait to jump in and you know take part of this entire event because it's going to be once of a lifetime kind of opportunity. I'm all set. I'm ready. got my ticket. I'm ready to go. I'll be running in with a bunch of content creators as well there. So I'm super excited about this. Probably do a vlog as well because it seems like it's a pretty unique experience I want to share with you guys. So if you guys want to see that vlog, let me know in the comment section down below by tapping that like button, which is the best way to let me know you guys want to see some more content like this. And it is straight up the best way to help out this video within that all famous YouTube algorithm. So if you guys enjoying the content, make sure to tap that like. Well, a true service record was recently added to Halo Waypoint, but now that service record now features game history and post game carnage reports now on there. So if you guys want to check your stats and see your progress on your rank and stuff like that, well, this is the best way to go about doing it. Obviously we have Halo Tracker, which I think does a little bit better job of showcasing stats and stuff like that. But if you're looking to do it in a more official capacity, utilizing Halo Waypoint finally in some kind of way, this will be your chance to actually do it. You can actually click on all the matches you've had. You click, you click on the details, it will open up. It will showcase all your stats and stuff like that. It's a pretty nice addition. I mean, obviously I'm not super crazy about it, but like it's a nice thing to have on the website. We'll see if there's anything else coming with this website, especially when it comes to the file share system that I hope will be on Halo Waypoint. We do know that's coming in game in some capacity for with Forge, uh, we'll just see what happens. And I'll cross my fingers that it'll be the best situation. Doritos and Rockstar are teaming back up for some awesome promotion, guys. You get a chance to get some challenge swaps, some XP boosts, but Doritos actually do have a little bit of some extra content coming for you guys here. As in, we're gonna get a chance to have an awesome looking Razorback right here, which has a cool like orange, teal, red kind of coloring to it. Here's a better in-game shot that was posted on Twitter so I thought we'd share with you guys. I'm like, actually this coating looks kind of awesome. It's flashy, it's bright, it's vibrant, it's fun. I really like it. I'm definitely gonna have to go to the store and pick up some Doritos because I want this. This looks awesome. I just wish that they would do some promotions with like something that's relatively healthy. Like chips aren't really that bad, but like why can't we have like a, I don't know, like an Aquafina or a Dasani kind of promotion. Like here, drink some water, you thirsty sweat lords that are playing matchmaking still because that skill-based matchmaking is going to make you sweat in Halo Infinite. There's some data mined progress on the winter update, guys. As you do know, the roadmap is all subject to change, but recently Sereja said that 343 has started testing the winter update on their pre-certification branches. Seems like it's fully ready to release on November 8th. So things are actually on track not subject to change, at least for this date, is that it's actually going to happen. On November 8th, we'll get some new content, we'll get the new maps, we'll get the new battle pass added in there as well, some bug fixes and stuff like that. Uh, match XP beta, we'll see how that plays out as well. I'll be breaking all of it down on the channel for you guys here. Uh, we should be getting some information about the winter update here pretty soon as it's coming up what within like a month it will be going live. So we've made it guys. We're making our way through season two to get to this winter update. They have something new at least to do in the game. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll definitely will be grinding out the battle pass for sure. Now some interesting about the menus not looking to be changing with season three coming around for us guys here. The Halo.API Twitter recently put this out saying like hey we'd be cool to be able to change the uh, menus stuff like this. 
Well, Sereja said in the API currently lists a main menu variation for season three, but nothing has been spotted for the winter update yet. So we could expect to see some changes when it comes to your menu, kind of like what we did with like season two. Probably every new season will get some new kind of changes. I hope it's like a new setting rather than just sitting on those boxes like we do right now. Continuing on with some leaked information, Bathrobe Spartan tweeted this all out in French, so I'll have to follow the Twitter translator here, but Bathrobe Spartan, if you guys haven't heard, we've, we've covered him previously on the channel. He's a very notable leaker, rather credible actually. He actually did leak out the two maps that were coming in for the winter update, saying, you've heard a lot about the gossip lately about the Halo Infinite engine, right? We can tell you that we have answers to give you very soon. As good old Tashi would say, stay tuned, big stuff on the way. Let's stay under control so it's not, not so big. So maybe he's kind of trying to squell the uh, recent rumors of Unreal Engine being the new engine for Halo Infinite. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. This is current leaks and rumors stuff kind of going around, a lot of speculation happening. Nothing concrete has gone live yet. But like what Jess Corden said, you know, when there's smoke, there's fire. And right now there's a lot of smoke and I'm currently following up with this news story, guys. As soon as we get some more new reports from credible leakers or some official information from 343, then I'll share with you guys here on the channel. This was a recently leaked out Forerunner weapon that's in the game files in some capacity. Obviously super early, it's not textured properly. I'm sure the animations aren't quite set either. But it's an interesting thing to just take a look at how this weapon shoots, where their first few shots are red bolts where then the follow-up shots are blue bolts. So this could be like a red plasma kind of weapon like we see for the Banished, right? But then they finish off with blue shots, maybe like a shock kind of thing. So utilizing two different types of ammo types within the same weapon. It's quite interesting. Not sure if it's a Forerunner weapon or I me. Mean, it could likely be a Banish weapon right here, uh, doing utilizing the different types of ammo. But we're not quite sure. Obviously, these are very early prototypes. This might not even make it into the game. Uh, a lot of people said it actually might be the Armament Blaster that we've tweeted out and mentioned previously on the channel. I don't think so because it has a different type of model and different type of firing with that weapon. Again, these are very early leaks. Uh, this might not even make it into the game, but I thought it was something cool to share with you guys. The idea of a weapon having two different types of ammo types within it would be a really interesting twist on Halo weapons. Usually they're rather straightforward. They don't really change a whole lot, obviously with maybe firing modes, maybe a little bit, but for functionality and what it shoots, it's pretty consistent. Uh, so this would be a, definitely a twist on the Halo sandbox to see if there's some kind of way to make it function as you would expect. Maybe like with the first shots being red plasma, you rip the shields and the second part will have maybe like be the electric ammo where you can kind of charge shots or link damage together. Or maybe it's blue plasma they might enter into the game and blue plasma might act different than red plasma. Science fiction lore stuff. Also recently found in a data mine right here from Sereja showcasing that we might have a chance to have some type of Forerunner, Covenant, maybe even Banish style coatings on your weapons right here. Stating here that every Forerunner Covenant weapon has these banned the underscore mod alternate coatings on it. And I'm wondering if at some point banished variants of these weapons are planned. Saying that the coating files are just gray with a bit of red and they're clearly unfinished. So certainly a work in progress, but this definitely would be really awesome to have like the banished style weaponry kind of coatings into the game. That would be super sick, like put on a battle rifle or something if possible even. I mean like, yeah. Count me in. That looks awesome. Talking about awesome, this is a leaked coding that recently was added to the API. And I'm thinking this, like, if this is not a promotion with Oreo as like a weapon coding or armor cores coding, as it says right here in the tweet, uh, I would be shocked. This is absolutely Oreos. Like, if this is not Oreos, I would be shocked. Now we have some news when it comes to infection in Halo Infinite. Now we covered this video previously that uh, Bathro Spartan was able to find a way to kind of get into the infection mode that's within Halo Infinite at the moment, where the humans have grapple shots and shotguns with a pistol, while the infected only have a sword, which Seems a bit odd to give extra mobility to the humans. Obviously a grapple shot's a really fun addition and would definitely would be kind of an interesting twist on infection. But we do have some more information about the infected and possibly the flood. As our familiar leaky boy Sereja tweeted out this image chain, Arena Infection, which I'm like, okay, yeah, infection coming in. And then you also said underneath it, S4 as in meaning season four coming most likely in July then. Hopefully, fingers crossed, subject to change. But this was recently tweeted out by B. 
Hib, is I pronounce your name properly? Let me know if I come across to get here. But uh, this is very interesting. A tidal wave towards, looks like forge, with a leaf four being like seasons, my guess, would be number four. A lot of water flooding into forge. Blood in forge? Could this be thing like actually AI flood in forge to tie in with infection? Uh, I mean, correlating with all the other leaks that we've had already, I mean, like we talked about infection coming in with season four and stuff like that. Um, that would be amazing to have like forgeable AI being the flood put into Halo Infinite. I mean, absolutely a big W there. We'll have to wait and see until we get some concrete information. I wouldn't expect to hear anything in an official capacity. Most likely, probably right before the release of Season 4. So probably not till like May or June we'll actually know about this in any kind of official capacity. Of course, once we get some more information, if we get any more leaks, that have like screenshots and stuff like that. Oh, I'll definitely share it because that's way too exciting to keep to myself. Now for a little bit of news outside of Halo, but Halo adjacent, if you will. If you guys all probably know that Microsoft is currently acquiring Activision Blizzard and it's a huge merger. Sony actually has been trying to legally stop this from happening saying that might be too much consolidation of the gaming development sphere, entertainment sphere and stuff like that, which it seems like it's pending on some major things right here. One, clearing in the US, uh, clearing in Brazil and clearing in Europe. And if those all clear, we're all good to go to have this finalized most likely during June or July, most likely in June where Microsoft's fiscal year ends uh, for this deal to finally go through. And well, looks like we have some actual news from a region approving this merger right here, saying Microsoft deal to purchase Activision Blizzard approved by another regulator. That regulator being Brazil, a major regulator in the world right here because if Brazil could find some kind of way to cancel this, then most likely like Europe and other regions could utilize that same kind of reasoning as well. But it seems like they're all for it. And this deal looks to be more and more on its way to actually happening. So Game Pass is about to get a massive buff when it comes to its offering, added in all the Activision Blizzard catalog, which is all, uh, sad to say a lot of amazing stuff tied behind some pretty horrible uh, business practices from Activision and Blizzard, but the games themselves are really good. I'm really looking forward to playing Diablo 4, likely through Game Pass, and I'm gonna be very happy about that. Now, Microsoft might be winning legal battles when it comes to acquiring large billion, multi-billion dollar companies, but you know what they're not winning in? New fans for Halo, and I talk about this in my video that's going live tomorrow about Cyberpunk Edge Runners and how that show actually revitalized Cyberpunk and how the Halo show, well, Failed to do so. Here's a little sneak peek of what you have to expect for the video. Given the fact that this game was dragged through the gutter when it comes to being poor releases, it was buggy, borderline unplayable, totally immersion breaking, especially for an RPG game. You need to have that immersion to be able to feel like you're in the world. And when you have all these bugs and glitches, it really gets in the way of things. Hello there, Night City. What the? What the? What is this? But it's a little bit more than just the good show for Cyberpunk for why it's happening. I discuss all that within this video. Check out the link right there. When you click through the link, make sure you set a reminder. When that video does go live, I'll be in the chat hanging out with all of you guys. So thank you much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.